In January 2024, a photo taken in Harbin went viral. It captured a woman holding a traditional sugar-coated hawthorn stick in one hand, an ice cream in the other, and beaming at the camera. That woman? None other than Zhao Wei, the actress who skyrocketed to fame as Xiaoyan Su and earned the title of China's female Warren Buffett. Zhao Wei appeared on Forbes China's list six times and was ranked among global billionaires in 2018 with an estimated net worth of around $1 billion. At the height of her career, she and her husband made a jaw-dropping $560 million in a single day from stock investments. Their portfolio included 89 historic Siheyuan courtyard homes in Beijing, 106 vineyards in France, along with a collection of luxury cars and private jets. But then, in 2021, poof, she vanished. No warning, no explanation. Her films were pulled from streaming platforms, her assets were frozen, and the state media slapped her with the label of disgraced artist. So, what happened? And now, as she suddenly resurfaces, is this the start of a major comeback? Today, we're breaking down the mystery of Zhao Wei, her rise, fall, and everything in between. From Little Swallow to Big Phoenix Born in 1976 in Wuhu, Anhui, Zhao Wei came from a modest family, but her looks and charm set her apart early on. By 1996, she was accepted into the prestigious Beijing Film Academy, where she didn't just get in, she topped the national exams, outshining thousands. In a school filled with beautiful, ambitious actresses, Zhao still stood out. During her second year, the legendary Chiang Yao cast her as Xiao Yan Zhu in My Fair Princess, a show that became the television sensation of the late 90s. When it aired in 1998, it captured 47% of the audience. For many, summer and winter breaks meant one thing, Zhao Wei as the playful, mischievous Xiao Yan Zhu on their screens. Just like that, Zhao Wei was everywhere, skyrocketing to fame. Soon, the big screen came calling. Zhao proved her versatility, taking on everything from the quirky, makeup-laden underdog in Stephen Chow's Shaolin Soccer to the romantic lead alongside Chang Chen in Love Story in Shanghai. She wasn't just a TV star, she was a box office queen. But fame has its price. In 2001, a scandal hit when a fashion magazine published a photo of Zhao wearing an outfit resembling the Japanese military flag, causing national outrage. She was branded a traitor, and her career hit rock bottom. For most, this would have been the end. But not for Zhao Wei. She rebounded, thanks in part to her connections with some high-profile figures, like Ye Mao Qing, the son of a powerful Shanghai real estate mogul, and Wang Yu, one of Beijing's notorious Four Young Masters. Despite the scandal, Zhao came back stronger. She starred in blockbuster films like Painted Skin and Red Cliff, collected prestigious awards, and re-established herself as one of China's biggest stars. Suddenly, in 2009, Zhao made the leap from being a star sought after by investors to becoming an investor herself. This transformation began quietly in 2008, when she married businessman Huang Yulong, an important name in her story. A marriage shrouded in political intrigue? Before marrying Zhao Wei, Wang Yulong was virtually unknown. It was only after their wedding that details about him began to surface, labeling him as a wealthy Singaporean businessman. But his path to fortune remained unclear, especially given his poor background. One story claims Huang made his first fortune in the cement business. However, there's a more intriguing rumor. He was once a driver and assistant to former Shenzhen mayor Xu Zongheng. Xu, a key figure in one of China's biggest corruption scandals, was sentenced to death with reprieve in 2011 for accepting massive bribes. Xu embezzled over 20 billion yuan, about 2.7 billion USD, during his tenure. But when he was arrested in 2009, most of that money vanished. Word has it that Huang helped Xu launder the money and manage his assets. And when Xu fell, part of his fortune became up for grabs. By 2008, Huang, at just 32, had already become a billionaire. That same year, he married Zhao Wei, and in 2010, they welcomed their daughter in Singapore. Zhao Wei's career only flourished after becoming a mother. She stepped into directing, and her debut film, So Young, was a blockbuster, raking in 720 million yuan, about 100 million USD. She became the first female director in China to cross 100 million yuan at the box office with her debut. 
Meanwhile, Xiao and Huang were building a financial empire. Known as the Longway Media Network, the couple and couple invested heavily in China's film industry, purchased four vineyards in France, and set up dozens of companies in tax havens like Hong Kong, Singapore, the Cayman Islands, and the British Virgin Islands. Investigations revealed Huang had registered 27 companies in Hong Kong alone, under names like Yuntu Group and Belt and Road, while Zhao had at least seven companies in her name. What these companies did, or how profitable they were, remained a mystery. But one thing was clear, the couple's wealth was growing rapidly. By 2018, they appeared on the Hurun Rich List with a combined net worth of $1 billion. Zhao owned at least eight luxury homes in Hong Kong and Singapore, transforming from a small town girl into a superstar and billionaire. Often seen with business moguls like Jack Ma, Zhao was involved in high-profile deals and earned the nickname China's female Warren Buffett. However, as their wealth and influence grew, so did public scrutiny, with increasing criticism over how they had amassed their fortune. Shell Companies and Stock Market Fraud In 2014, Zhao Wei and her husband, Wang Yulong, made headlines by investing 2.5 billion yuan, $350 million, to acquire a 9.18% stake in Alibaba Pictures, making them the second largest shareholders after Jack Ma's Alibaba, which held a commanding 60.98% stake. At the time, Alibaba Pictures was buzzing with potential, positioned as a rising star in the entertainment industry. The company had announced high-profile collaborations with top directors from China, Hong Kong, and Taiwan, while securing rights to adapt popular online novels. Zhao Wei's involvement further boosted the company's profile, driving its stock prices to new heights. However, just months later, Zhao and Huang made a controversial move, twice selling off large chunks of their Alibaba Pictures shares, pocketing at least 230 million USD HKD 1.788 billion dollars. Investors quickly realized they'd been played in a financial game, feeling like pawns in a larger scheme. This move severely damaged Zhao Wei's reputation among investors, and her next steps only worsened the public backlash. In 2016, the real turning point came when Zhao and Huang, through their Longway Media Company, proposed acquiring a 29% stake in Wanja Culture for 3.06 billion yuan, $430 million, making them the largest shareholders. Wanjia Culture, however, was no ordinary company. It was a classic shell company, a publicly traded entity with little to no actual business operations used as a financial tool to inflate value. Over the years, Wanjia had shifted its business focus repeatedly, from mining to real estate, the internet, and even esports. Despite never earning more than 50 million yuan, 7 million doll, annually, and sometimes reporting losses, the company's market value mysteriously skyrocketed from 2 billion yuan to 11.7 billion yuan, 1.6 billion dollars. While the $430 million USD price tag for Wanjia culture seemed hefty, Zhao and Huang had only invested 60 million yuan, 8.5 million USD of their own money. The rest, borrowed, leveraged up to 50 times, turning this into the ultimate something-for-nothing deal. They secured funding from two main sources. First, Tibet Yinbixen Asset Management, a financial company under billionaire Xiao Jianhua's Tomorrow Holdings, lent them 1.5 billion yuan. The second source was another 1.5 billion yuan, borrowed by using stock collateral from various financial institutions. Tomorrow Holdings, led by Xiao Jianhua, was a vast network of companies and financial institutions, often referred to as a white glove operation serving the interests of Zhang Zemin's family and key officials in his faction. At its height, Tomorrow Holdings controlled over 4,000 shell companies with assets worth trillions of yuan, making it one of the most powerful financial players in China. But their success didn't last. In the wake of President Xi Jinping's anti-corruption campaign, Xiao Jianhua was secretly detained in Hong Kong in 2017 and sentenced to 13 years in prison in 2022. His conglomerate was hit with a massive 55 billion yuan fine, 7.52 billion USD. The second loan Zhao Wei and Huang Yulong took was particularly risky. It was secured against stocks they didn't even own yet. This was a leveraged buyout where they used shares they planned to acquire as collateral to finance the purchase. It was a sophisticated trick, 
the textbook definition of a something-for-nothing deal. In reality, Zhao and Huang only invested 60 million yuan of their own money, while Tibet Yinbison covered 1.5 billion yuan. All they needed to do was shift the funds through their bank accounts, essentially without cost. Then wait for Wanjia Culture's stock price to rise and cash out for a profit. It was a near effortless money printing machine. However, the deal reeked of manipulation, and Zhao Wei's celebrity status drew attention to it. By 2017, the China Securities Regulatory Commission stepped in and shut down the transaction. Public and media backlash was fierce, but the penalties were light. Longwei Media was fined 600,000 yuan, while Zhao Wei and Huang Yulong were each fined 300,000 yuan and banned from the stock market for five years. Despite the financial blow, Zhao Wei's career didn't falter. She remained active in entertainment, shifting her focus to founding a media company, managing artists, and investing in film projects she was passionate about. Then, in August 2021, everything came to a sudden stop. Money laundering for Zhang Zemin's faction? Zhao Wei's downfall began when her rising star artist Zhang Jahan was caught in a scandal after photos of him near Japan's controversial Yasukuni shrine surfaced. The backlash on Chinese social media was swift, and soon after, Zhao Wei was labeled by state media as a disgraced artist and completely blacklisted. All traces of Zhao's work were erased, her films were pulled from streaming platforms, and the TV shows she appeared in were canceled. She vanished from public life, leaving no trace. Rumors swirled. Some said she had died, others claimed she had gone into hiding, and a few even suggested she had been detained. This sudden disappearance left many confused. Even in the past, when Zhao Wei faced controversies, she had never disappeared like this. Why was this scandal different? Typically, when an artist is embroiled in a scandal, the management company distances itself. Zhao's company wasn't responsible for Zhang's actions, so why was her entire film empire affected? Even Zhao's decades-old controversy from 2001, when she wore a dress resembling the Japanese flag, was dragged back into the spotlight. It raised a larger question. Was someone using this scandal to bring down Zhao Wei once and for all? Had she crossed someone powerful? Looking back at her quick recovery from the 2001 scandal, and comparing it to her complete erasure in 2021, it seems likely that this order came from the highest levels of authority, beyond anything Zhao or her husband could influence. Amidst Zhao's fall, a photo circulated online showing her standing close to an older man, smiling warmly. That man was Zheng Qinghuai, the younger brother of Zheng Qinghong, a former Politburo Standing Committee member and a heavyweight in Chinese politics. Zheng Qinghuai, a longtime investor in Hong Kong's film industry also wielded considerable influence. It's notable that just before Zhao's blacklisting, China saw a series of high-profile crackdowns, including Jack Ma's Alibaba and the arrest of pop star Chris Wu. These were part of Xi Jinping's broader efforts to dismantle Jiang Zemin's powerful faction in both politics and entertainment. Chris Wu, reportedly under immense pressure, had implicated several key players in the entertainment industry, including the well-known director Feng Xiaogang, part of the so-called Beijing Gang. Moreover, Chinese media outlet 163.com reported that Zhao Wei had close ties to the controversial spiritual figure Wang Lin, even calling him her mentor. Wang Lin was also linked to Jack Ma and had a reputation as a national advisor to Zhang Zemin. Zhao Wei was no ordinary actress. Unlike Fan Bingbing, who faced her own legal troubles, Zhao was deeply connected to high-powered figures like Jack Ma and was seen as a key link between the entertainment world, business elites, and political insiders. In 2016, reports suggested that Zhao was the second largest foreign financier in Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign after Saudi Arabia, which showcased her extraordinary wealth and global influence. This sudden disappearance became one of the biggest mysteries in China's entertainment industry in 2021. For the past three years, state media has remained silent on the issue, offering no explanation for Zhao's vanishing act. However, shortly before she was blacklisted, reports surfaced that Zhao and her husband had purchased a luxury penthouse in Singapore's exclusive villa district for HKD 150 million, 19.15 million USD. 
It seems clear that Zhao had been preparing for an exit strategy well in advance. While some of their assets in China were frozen, the couple managed to transfer a significant portion of their wealth overseas, particularly to Singapore. It's evident that Zhao and her husband had long been planning their escape. By January 2024, Zhao Wei reappeared in Harbin, and a photo of her quickly went viral. She looked happy. However, from January until this program was made in June 2024, her past works remained unavailable in China, and she hadn't appeared in any new films or TV shows. Her personal Weibo account remained inactive since 2021, and there was no news about her and her husband's frozen company shares being released. Zhao Wei's bright smile may not reflect a recovery in her career or finances. Perhaps she has finally let go, no longer concerned with what the financial world or entertainment industry thinks, and is choosing to live a quiet, ordinary life. And with that, today's story comes to an end. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this topic or our channel, please subscribe and stay tuned for future updates. See you next time.